It's July the 22nd, 2014, and I am the Nuclear Proctologist, and you can get me at nuclearproctologist.org. you got to put a dot in front of that. And once again, you know, that site is still under work. I changed, uh, I got rid of six layers today, and I'll get rid of another six or seven layers tomorrow, and you'll find them under sections at the top right-hand corner. And so each page will have its own section, like people were saying last night in the comments section. And that uh, was overwhelming on the donations. You folks are over the top. I certainly wasn't expecting that. And that money will pull up until I can do something with it. And we'll discuss that later in the week, what I'm going to be doing with that. Um, and we'll get your input on that too, because I want you to understand what I'm trying to do so you can be a part of it and so you can take some comfort in what we're up to. Good night, John. Amthurst, Brian, Mr. I Can See, Toxic, Don B, Kevin O'Kane, Candace. And once again, folks, everybody donated last night. I wasn't really expecting that. That was, wow, stuff. And so we got a good show again tonight. Where uh, That certainly motivates me now. Uh, it's been a rough couple of weeks. Today I spent all day on the site reformatting at the nuclearproctologist.org. And I didn't get a chance. I put some Chernobyl stuff up, but I didn't get a chance to put all my folders up because I had to go in and redo the site to make it easier on your browser. And I suggest uh, for time being to use sections if you're going to save it in your bookmark, and that way it'll light up a lot quicker and you get access to everything. So tonight I got a really, I think I got a really interesting uh, night ahead of us. A quick note. Uh, Slippery Pixel, Stacy Anderson, Mickey Smith, Standing Foot again, and Kevin. Just make sure I get everybody down. B. Yeah, thank you, folks. You. Yeah. <laughs> Standing Foot. I I just gonna go. Fox Fukushima radioactive material still being found in the U.S. soil. And so cesium's got a 30-year half-life times 10. Everything half-life is times 10. So that's 300 years you'll find the cesium. There's 100 times plutonium. Plutonium with a U. Uh, I'm sorry. Strontium with an S. <laughs> strontium 90 that came across at the same time with cesium. And like when you had iodine, massive floods of iodine, you could, and you can check the nuclear proctologist for USA and Canada's and you'll see a um, couple of hundred headlines there. Let me keep going. So I didn't get to this one. Uh, it was detectable right across the northern hemisphere after four days from Fukushima. There was three melter reactors and a detonated reactor. And I just want to touch on a couple of things here. In the comments section was um, D&I mutations. And uh, I was reading through it, and they left a comment if Dana's watching. And there was a link to uh, Paul uh, Langley's nuclear history blog. And he's talking about the human tissues harvested without permission. There was a couple of thousand children in Australia. And you can see the bottom of um, that, that. If Dana is watching this topic, you might really like YouTube uh, about this cover-up. And that was um, Sun and Storm. I didn't import it. I didn't have time because I forgot about it. And then I remembered it. Sun and Storm, atomic testing in Australia. Fukushima fallout will be far worse. That's on YouTube. Sun and Storm, atomic testing in Australia. Fukushima fallout will be far worse. That's an Australian documentary about the fallout in their country and all the children that were dug up. There's a few thousand children and people dug up by the industry had their bones cremated to, in order to get see how much plutonium was in it. It's a maniacal industry, no matter how you try it. Totally maniacal. And Paul Langley, I'm not sure if this is his recent or one of his older blogs. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that because I do read things all the time. <laughs> and it was, I always say I should do that, so tonight I've done it. Because I do get my name mentioned a lot. And now they just mentioned me by Dana. And it's like, <laughs> you, you can assume it's me they're talking about because I've seen it so much. Uh, temporary closing of India power plant. Now, that was the title of the story we got here tonight. 
at the Indian Point Power Plant. Now, the Wall Street only put a little tiny burp there, and you got to pay to read the rest of it, but I found another link to it, and that's below the video. That's the Indian Point Power Plant, and they have protests there since Fukushima. This is the inside um, of, a, of a reactor. And it's a pretty amazing picture, and so this is how they're indoctrinating the population anyway. But temporary closing of the Indian Point power plant is considered, and so millions of fish, you can read it up there, right? Millions of fish are killed as Indian Point sucks in 2.5 billion gallons of the Hudson River water daily to cool the plant's components. So every plant on the planet is sucking in all this water and frying, boiling, it's boiling that water, so it cooks everything in it. And so a glass of salt water is 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, the basis of the food chain, and that also sequesters carbon and the, and the basis of oxygen. One of the most important things, itty bitty double cell cr critter, creature, I shouldn't call it critter because that's what I've reserved for the nuclear industry. And so they boil, uh, there's a billion other creatures in a glass of salt water besides the 75 to 100 million phytoplankton. And so it kills them. Now if you go down and kick over a rock on the beach, they'll club you and tase you, pepper spray you, and drag you into court and bankrupt you and destroy you and vilify you in the media and the local rags and everything else, right? But it's okay for the nuclear industry to boil billions of gallons in each reactor a day, destroying untold numbers, just one to the power of 100 million, you know, over a year. It's an inconceivable number. I don't, I don't know if it'll be that big of a number, because that's actually a, a massive number, but it's an inconceivable number when you think that a glass of water has 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, and then billions of other little creatures into it that are bigger than them. Right? And so it's an inherently bad thing because it's destroying, so when you think about Canada, with 25 reactors around Ontario, and they're using the one fresh water source, and so all the fresh water on the other side of that is boiled and sterilized. And so all those communities that are drinking that water, they're not getting the normal bacteria, the normal life that's in your water, and, and is good for you, is not harmful to you. No, it's really hideous what they do. They build these reactors right on the water for that purpose. And a couple of billion gallons a day, and now when that discharges back in, it's still hot. Right? So, like, it goes on and on and on, the cycle of it. And now when you kill all these creatures, you're boiling all these creatures. <coughs> so now it's an amazing amount of cubic miles. I got the numbers, dear. And... Um, just hang on a second, see if I can find it. I probably shouldn't even bother. Just one second. Um, sometimes I'm really good and sometimes I'm not. Ah, there it is. So all reactors are boiling water reactors and they each boil around a million gallons a minute. And a drinking glass of salt water, once again, contains around 75 to 100 million phytoplankton and they're the basis of the food web and the phytoplankton releases the oxygen into the water. Over half of the Earth's oxygen is created via phytoplanktons, not to mention there are billions of other marine animals in the same glass of water I just covered, I don't know. So there's 400, 1,440 minutes in a day and 400 plus operating reactors worldwide. Another way to think about it is each day a single nuclear plant boils 1.4 billion gallons of water or 5,347 miles 5,347 miles of 8 cubic yard cement trucks of water, bumper to bumper. Or every month you can circle the planet six times with 8 cubic yard cement trucks full of water of dead marine life. Or with 400 boiling water plants, that means we could circle the planet 2,400 times a month with 8 cubic yard cement trucks that you see on the highway every day, bumper to bumper. 2,400 circles are a month from the nuclear plants. That's just 400 of them. That's not all of them. And that's not uh, counting the university's couple of thousands. We get around uh, 7,500 cubic miles 
of boiled water. 7,500 cubic miles of boiled water over 40 years with 400 boiling water reactors. And there's 19 cubic miles of water over 40 years per reactor. So Canada, 25 boiling reactors, that's uh, 468 miles, cubic miles, uh, of fresh water. And so you killed all the life, all the animals in the water. And we can say the Great Lakes are basically boiled so much they're almost sterilized and they're empty of oxygen after 40 years. And America, by the way, has enough radiation waste to cover all of the states, and not all of the states, oh, that's the wrong one, enough to cover West Virginia, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Hawaii, New Hampshire, Delaware, and Vermont, the entire states in a half an inch of chunks, ground up chunks of nuclear waste. So when they say there's three cubic miles, it's not very much. It can cover West Virginia, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Hawaii, New Hampshire, Delaware, and Vermont. See? See how they do it to you? And that would melt your organs. If you try to run around the block five or six times, you would melt your organs. Because there's x-rays and neutrons, not to mention the gammas, betas, and alphas that went through a chain reaction. So I thought that was a fun little tidbit. Let's keep it rolling. Keep it rocking. Mary Sanders, Sander. Um, let me see the original Punisher. Thank you once again for folks for the donations. It's a little early. I probably shouldn't be pushing that yet. I got to get that site working better. Everything I'm getting, I'm pulling it. And we're hoping to get like $120,000 Zodiac. And so we can send crews up there. We need special gear. We need radiation equipment. You need to be able to detect different types of radiation. And what I'm trying to do there, and I'll, I'll cover it in the video late, later the week, but like I'm not going for, you know, just a little day trips. I, I want to send people. I can't do it myself because I live in a hospital bed, but I understand the entire coastline perfectly. I've been on around 4,000 islands. I got 14 years as a commercial diver. I spent my whole life on the ocean. I ran multi-million and billion dollar operations. And in order to do what we need to do, we need something that can handle any weather and that can travel long distances. And so I'm not going to digress tonight, but that's what I'm trying to do is raise the money to, to go ahead and get something like that. So that's the start. And then we can start really bringing you all kinds of footage and information, real stuff. We'll go out and dive the coastlines looking for life to see if it's there or not. We want to know. I'll be happy if it's fine. Trust me. I got no problem. Whatever is there will be shown, and we're going to try to stream it live out to everybody as soon as we start. So we need to ra raise a lot of money, and I'll be covering that later, and I'll do little money bombs later. Uh, so, d you know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, but I'm going to try to raise that money because we have to find out. We can't trust the system. You know that. I covered all that repeatedly. Besides dying as they are sucked up in the plant system, fish. Now, the nuclear plants go through a million gallons a minute of salt water and fresh water. They suck it through to cool down, and it kills everything. And other aquatic life forms, when they come into contact with the warmer water that's discharged back into the river by the plant. And so everything about the nuclear industry is a complete fable. It's a 100% whack job fable. And it's got everybody on the planet and every creature on the run on this planet and has got cancer right now in them, but it won't show up for another 5, 10, 15 years. It might show up, uh, showing up, don't get me wrong. Castrontium and cesium are both capable of attacking your heart right away and giving you heart attacks and giving you seizures and giving you uh, lesions on your organs. Because like the Americans can eat 1,200 Beckwells of man-made radiation in their foods. If you live in 50 Beckwell environment, just living in it, you'd get permanent lesions to your organs. So what's consuming it going to do over a couple of years? It's really going to turn out bad. And then the genetically modified organs. Now, organisms. A boiling water reactor. I don't know if you can see it here, but the blue one, the blue one right there, that's sucking in the salt water and spitting it back out. 
And the suck's in a million gallons. And so this is not going to look very uh, weird, you don't think? What do we got done there, Dana? I just screwed that up. Can't give you nothing. You just screw it up, Dana. Uh, so these plants, this is Fukushima, by the way. These plants are on the ocean because that's their old shit plan. Right? As the reactor goes into China Syndrome, the ocean and the rivers come in and cover it up. And it keeps exchanging water. And so you pollute everything. It, all plants are leaking into your environment. All nuclear plants are hemorrhaging heavily into your environment. And so the nuclear fuel pools in all your plants are boiling off. Each one of them 120,000 liters a day from the spent fuel rods. And they're cracked and the radioactive material and the neutrons and the x-rays are getting absorbed into the water. And then the water evaporates in your community. If you drink that, it'll kill you. And that's heavy water. That's a special kind of water. You know why there's a shortage of helium on the planet? It's because the nuclear industry needs it. There's not a shortage. They want it all for themselves. Because they're going to destroy all of that. They're going to destroy all the oceans. Because they're all connected. Right? When you look at all the tanks at Fukushima, think about that. That's nothing. That's, that's the illusion to keep you in hope. But that plant has, uh, um, say, a thousand gallons a minute, a thousand pounds a minute of radioactive dye hem hemorrhaging into it, 1,440 minutes a day. So there's a, a St. Paddy's Day every minute, 1,440 minutes a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. 1,440 plumes, not a single plume, but 1,440 plumes. And, <coughs> hi France, Sylvia, Missing Sky, checks and balances, Lunar. Uh, Missing Sky, by the way, folks, is, is hardcore, has been working so hard. And, you know, like, um, there's a whole bunch of people down below my video, I'm scratching myself here. Let me get back up, um. Uh, Radchick had just put out another uh, headline. She's writing a lot of stuff. And we got to try to push people like this, like Missing Sky and Radchick and Miss Milky and New World Magic and Kevin Blanche and Thomas Ackerman, who always makes me laugh, and which is hard to do, trust me. And so many other people that are out there working so hard. Stacy's, I mean, amazing amount of work that goes into every detail. In, in these people's lives you know so much detail is going in there that's not easy to do I know because that's what I do is detail 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 um, and when you got people like that that are dedicated and at it they pick up so much knowledge and it's just those little things that that translate once you get to know them and understand what they're what they're about and so you, I'm just saying you should always catch Rad Chicks articles I, I got to cover it every time from here on out that she does an article. I got to put up something. And she's got some wicked pictures. And I had them loaded. And I was like, no, nah, I can't do that to her. She, I got to make people go over there and see the pictures. Because <laughs> that wouldn't be fair. I'll do it later when she got more stories buried on top of it. But I'll still save the best ones. So they got to go over and look at them, right? Let me keep going because I got a whole lot here that I, I might digress if I'm not careful. But the population density in an area around India Point is extraordinary. So if they have a nuclear fallout, like 50 miles is nothing. Fukushima showed us that, right to the other end of the country. From one end to the other end, you go over to nuclearproctologist.org, there's a link below, and you can go look at Japan, you can go look at the radiation, the illnesses, the sicknesses, it's just frightening. You can look at the fallout for North America, a litany of the media, even though it all got buried, we got it all aggregated there. And so the, the population in that area is getting a dose from India Point because of the contaminants that are coming out of the stacks from the 120,000 liters a day anyway. But it's boiling all that water all around it and destroying all that and creating all, all the global gases and everything else at the same time. By doing that, like a, a nuclear plant is the worst thing. It's the worst thing imaginable. You can't get any worse. Uh, well, I suppose... You can, when they're melted down, they're worse. And so Fukushima, 
This is Unit 3. It's 2 million times worse than any other reactor on this planet. It's 2 million times worse than any other reactor. i got to repeat that because it's incredulous. It's incredible. It's inconceivable that something like that exists, but yet there it is, or there it was. That was a 10-story building. And now that's Unit 4 right there, and that's Unit 2. Don't, and don't think because you see Unit 2 looks pretty good. It's wasted. It's a wasteland. You can never get in there for hundreds of years. Nobody in your lifetime will ever get in there. And Unit 4, and by the way, go back to, to that one more time, just to touch one more, is that Chernobyl was one-third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. And this reactor is considered two million times worse than any other reactor, which makes it uh, 18 million times worse, because it's one it's three times bigger, and it was 100% meltdown, and Chernobyl was 30%. But also, Unit 4, all the assemblies from the reactors were in the storage pool. You see that? Where's it too? It blew up, caught fire, and evaporated. And, and big chunks of it melted down through the building and disappeared down into the earth. Uh, the China Syndrome. All of the reactors had the China Syndrome. All of the reactors had their backs broken. All of the reactors' basements and I've showed the picture so many times, are full of water, extraordinary cubic centimeters in the billions of becquels of all kinds, of the, just the most toxic soup imaginable. But yet, look at that building. Look at it really close. Does that look like there's a structural integrity left to this 10-story building? Well, BBC showed... Uh, i got to slide out of the way. BBC shows this beautiful interior. Look at that. How does that interior end up inside of Unit 4, you might ask yourself, when we know these are the official pictures, both of those. And here's another official picture. That's the same fuel pool that the BBC is showing you. That's the same fuel pool that you see right there. They can't get in and clean up Chernobyl. They can't clean up any other reactor. So how did they do that? Well, that's a fable to trick you, and that's why we exist. Uh, CBC done the same thing to everybody. Now, what you see that building leaning over, building uh, four, but look at the fuel pool up there, it's gorgeous, right? Here's another picture of that one. But what was the point I wanted to make? Let me come back to that picture one more time for you. Was that the building, that one there, the structure doesn't touch the other building. And eventually they're planning on putting a crane in the roof of it. There's neither one there. So there's no way to get the fuel rods or the fuel assemblies out of number three because the, in the top of that building, there's no crane. It's just a shell. They use the cranes to lay the pieces in. You won't see anybody with cutting torches or scaffolds. And I'm not going to stay on that one all night, but that's CBC showing you a perfectly intact building and at the same time showing you a structure and a cap over the destroyed building, right? And so that's Unit 4, and inside of that apparently is this perfect building according to CBC. So CBC is in on the hoax. And that fuel pool actually looks like this, and it's full of projectiles from the detonated buildings all around it. Now physics.org done the same thing. Physics.org came out and lied to everybody and said, hey, look how gorgeous it is inside of the building. Now, how can you expect it to be gorgeous inside of that? How did you go from in destroyed, utterly destroyed, to looking around the building, to the walls and the ceilings and the molly-made interior? How does that add up? I got no concept. But it doesn't, right? Uh, let me play a quick short video for you. It's Harvard on March the 16th. And it's up on their YouTube site. And I clipped this little tiny one out. And they actually fessed up. And all the media knew. On March the 16th, 2011. Uh, firstly, uh, Units 1 through 3 are suffering core damage accidents. And perhaps spent fuel pool accidents as well. The spent fuel pool is located at the top of the reactor building. Uh, which in each case is, is damaged, Units 1 and 3, in, in fact, destroyed at that location. 
So the buildings are destroyed, in fact. By the way, there's no chemicals in my cigarette. Your cigarette might have 4,000 chemicals. Mine don't. Yours might have a filter. Mine don't. Your filter makes the particles smaller, and they get through the liners of your lungs and the membrane in your brain. So don't give me a hard time. There's just nicotine. And the reason you get cancer is 4,000 chemicals, not nicotine. After 50 years, you still can't prove a nicotine does anything, <laughs> except heal you, as long as you don't have 4,000 chemicals. Fukushima, bad and getting worse. Now, this is an amazing, absolutely amazing story I'm going to tell you. It's a very short story. Thank you, Nuts for Art. Thank you also for your donation. I seen your name there. I'm glad I got an opportunity. I'm overwhelmed by how good people were to me last night. I'm okay. In another few days, I'll lay out everything I need to do, how I'm planning to do it, how much I need to raise to do it, and, you know, I'm going to go that route. If i got to do it on my own, I'll, uh, you know, that's what I'm going to do. But I know I don't got to do it on my own. I don't think that I do got to do it on my own. And I don't imagine, I, uh, you know, I know I don't have to do it on my, on my own after last night in the day. And I reformatted the, the nuclearproctologist.org. Tomorrow I'll take another six layers off it. You'll find all the layers in selections in the right-hand side of that website. And I'll probably jump over it and just give you a quick... Uh, just to make it easier to load on your browsers, even if you've got bad computers. So I'm going to change the whole site so every subject has its own page. And so there will be like 15 uh, scripts on one page instead of 5,000 on the one page like I had last night. Because <laughs> every page, every picture, it, it lit up. When you click on it, it'll light up for you. And I was around 5,000 or something. So here's the story of Unsclear. And... What they're going by, I want you to read the top of it. Let me turn the audio down on this. The total amount of radioactivity released by the disaster was underestimated. It was estimated they ignored the 3.5 years of emissions that continuously uh, continues unabated. And they only dealt with the releases during the first week of the disaster. See that? That sentence right there and that sentence below it. And only dealt with releases during the first week of the disaster. Dirty, rotten, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. It's been hemorrhaging out of there nonstop for three and a half years, over 1,200 days. Three melter reactors, and they're, they're not only counting the first release, the first week, that's all they're using, the ones clear in the United Nations, with their report that everybody's regurgitating, but they're only basing it upon Unit 1. It's shocking. It's an utter betrayal of everything that we've ever, we've ever, you know, we that organization is supposed to be the checks and balances. And, you know, it's coming out of there every day. They don't even look at that. They don't consider that. They don't put that into the equation. And I shouldn't be upset at this point and screaming. It's just, my goodness. My goodness, the, the most utter betrayal imaginable. You cannot possibly consider a worse betrayal if you understand the nuclear industry and what they've done there, and that gave all the media free reign. You remember Nicholas Fisher last night's video? He had 700 media newspapers put him up there. He had every TV show talk about it, for, and every newspaper except for New York Times. It was like everything but the kitchen sink kind of cliche when he says that. But he wasn't lying. And he was, oh, you know, the Japanese are getting the dose of an extra banana a day, poor buggers. I mean, that's, that's a betrayal of uh, academics. Well, they, they, they're all betrayal. No one's going to call him out. No one's going to hold him accountable at the institutions where he teach. And he proudly bragged that. He proudly bragged it. Just like that critter right here. They changed the laws uh, to keep their secrets. So you couldn't get any freedom of information about how they're gouging the system, how they're, how they're destroying the system. And i got to come back and get that headline for us here. Keep on track here. Temporary closing of India Point Power Plant because it's killing 
2.5 billion, they got more than one reactor, 2.5 billion gallons of the Hudson River water daily. So millions of fish and larvae, and then all of the creatures, the, the microscopic creatures are murdered, and they're destroying the ecosystem. Even if they never had a spill, even if they never had an accident, even if they never boil off 120,000 liters of radioactive material into your community every day, they're still inherently evil by doing that. If I go down and kick over a rock, I'm demonized. If they, they fill up the ocean around them for 50 square miles with dead animals, that's okay, it's a corporation. That's not acceptable. And some of the pictures tonight might be offline because I can tilt pictures. Uh, and I must have accidentally done it, and I didn't realize it when I was loading up tonight because I had to upload the 2,200 pictures to the nuclear proctologist site. And let me run over that for one second. We'll use the desktop. We'll use the desktop. Uh, so if you come over to sections over here in the right hand side and you click that, uh, that should load up a lot better than the other sections, just so, so I don't forget to mention it to you. Yeah? And so the ocean, you can click that, and because it's a cloud service, it'll start loading up. And you double click any of the, the, the pictures, and you can click your way through all this. In the history of science, we've never seen anything like the Fukushima plume heading across. Well, the ocean at uh, 2 miles per hour, 24 hours a day, is 48 miles. And that's roughly 50 square miles a day coming out of Fukushima, 1.8 million square miles in the last 1,200 days. But you got to think about it, that crosses the ocean in 130 days, and then every day behind that was 1,440 plumes each day. And so after 1,200 days, the ocean is circulating the radiation, and now it's accumulating. Now it's accumulative. So the rain is picking it up and lugging it into your coastline. And more Fukushima, let me go back, sorry. And you can click anywhere on the black on either side of the picture for forward and backwards. And the second picture always shows up blue for some reason, but the next couple of hundred are white. Fears marine life is being poisoned. Well, that's what was happening at India Power Plant, right? But more Fukushima nuclear pollution hit the U.S. starting in 2015. Well, you've got to realize what's wrong with that is that it takes 130 days to get across the ocean, but the rains, tens of thousands of miles of rain every day, will pick it up and bring it quicker. And so that you're getting a cumulative. Now... Drinking water has potassium-40 in it, like around 7,500 beckles. If you drink it, it's homeostasis, and you can't get any more in you. You off-gas the same amount. It's a natural phenomenon. It's called homeostasis, and it's well-known. It's like the cruise control on your car or the thermostat in your house. It's your body performs a, performs, prefers a function that regulates the potassium-40. So if you eat a banana with 12 beckles, you off-gas it. It's irrelevant. Your food, potato chips... It's irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with man-made material. But if you drink 7,500 becquels of cesium, then you got 7,500 becquels coming out of your body extra every moment of your life, and that will be all kinds. Now, you can't have just cesium. It doesn't travel alone. Wherever you see cesium, everything else is also there too. So let me, keep, let me run through a couple of them for us. The Times, lethal threat from Fukushima highly radioactive water flowing into the Pacific Ocean a threat to life. That's the Times. And all these headlines from E and E News are just aggregated. It's like Drudge Report where he aggregates it, except E and E News don't give you fluff. It don't feed you celebrity fluff. Right? It feeds you just the energy news. And from all the just aggregating it from everywhere. Radio New Zealand, Fukushima Daiichi has contaminated the biggest body of water on the planet and the radioactive leak to harm marine and ocean life till the end of time because it's accumulative. Because after 132 days, the ocean was full of radiation. It was well diluted. But by the end of 1,200 days, it's remixing over and over and over, getting picked up through the storms and deposited. There was massive releases. It's ongoing from the three melter reactors and the missing fuel pool at number four. And just let me hit a couple more for you while I'm here. And... Well, back to Charlie Up. Now, if you scroll down the page, you'll see the other sections are down there. And so it's following from the jet streams. You click on it, and you can come over and read through it. But here's the first one. says, Evidence from the Health Canada 
and it takes a few seconds for it to clear up. Evidence of sharp features in the Fukushima plume over southwestern British Columbia. The Fukushima plume over southwestern British Columbia. This is Health Canada went out and flew along the coastline. Several studies on March the 18th and the 19th, 2011, a few days after Fukushima, and found an invisible snowstorm. And that's why nuclearproctologist.org is so important. So you can go through this couple of hundred of cherry-picked headlines. I got thousands and thousands and thousands of more to put up here over the next week. But tomorrow I have to format the site and clean it up so that it's usable for everybody. And I kind of didn't get that, I guess. But I understand most people got ebooks and computers without graphic cards, and there was too much script on that site. So I'll have that done by tomorrow afternoon. And after that, every topic I'll load up on her the extra stuff each day. But um, this was the aerial survey along the British Columbia coastline they found on a snowstorm of radioactive particles. And this is where they took their samples, each one of those little red dots. And this is the snowstorm of invisible particles. And it didn't stop coming out of Fukushima. Just a single plume out of Fukushima is a huge concern. Coming out of there every day is the real deal. This is an extinction level event against the planet. And sometimes it'll do that to me. Because my browser... Here you go. I gotta I got click low to get the picture sometimes because of the way I got things set up. Because I keep flipping between my big screens. I haven't got my other one pinned on the wall yet. And I'm not sure I want to paint that wall blue or something. So I can wear different colors. Uh, this is the Fukushima plant. You can see that um, the, the, the releases are very visible. But the radiation coming out of there ever since is not as visible as that. But the hemorrhaging into the ocean is invisible. You can't see that. Does that mean that it's not happening? No, because they're pouring water, and I'll come back over here. They're pouring water on that plant every day. And that's the wrong picture, I know. Fukushima is what I wanted to get. They're pouring water on these plants all day long. It's a perpetual motion sh machine into the fuel pools, and they have no choice but to do that because they need to keep the water in the pools. They can't get in there and stick their finger in the holes because the buildings are detonated, right? And so all the water and the rain and the snow that goes in these buildings is washing the, the fissionable products. The radioactive material was dispersed all over the site uh, during the detonations. And these are rods and pellets. And each reactor had around 2,750 rods. And I better come over and check to see what I'm doing. And 37 minutes, we're still going strong. Let's come over and say hi to a few people. Thank you, Bob. Bob says great work. It, it is a lot of work. There's no doubt about that one. It's nonstop, but in about a week or two, I'll be able to get keep get back on track. Uh, MSVS, Missing Sky, Standing Foot, uh, Hi Pia, and your brother lives in Perth, France. Uh, Missing Sky is saying East, Eastern Ontario or near Ottawa. I know I'm going to digress for a few moments here. Sometimes I'm like that. i got to learn to do that more. Alex Smith is saying uh, heart defects is just madness to many children suffering. Let me add them. I ready to go, Alex, buddy. Hi, Ellie. Thank you. And Ellie's asking how old is Missing Sky's uncle. I guess I missed that part of the conversation. France grew up in Ontario, Ottawa. Yeah, and Ottawa's got 25 nuclear plants. And so that's pretty rough, you know, what they got done there, how they tricked everybody. They dumped so much waste into that river uh, and into the Lake uh, Superior, Lake Ontario. It's shocking what they've done in the 50s and 60s around this planet. But, like, the fuel pool is missing out of this building, but yet the NRC, at a congressional hearing, perjured themselves at the Senate hearing during a C-SPAN broadcast of public television, it said the integrity of the building is fine. There's no structural integrity damage to the buildings or to the fuel pools. Well, there's no fuel pool there. And yet the media let them off, just like they put Nicholas Fisher, 
who I covered last night, out in 700 newspapers because he talks about bananas. And it's really shocking that our media can't fact check. They certainly could. They'll fact check me if they, if they come after me. They'll find something and they'll come and they'll use that to barbarize me and to bludgeon me. But when they got Nicholas there, they let him have at it. And everybody's out there repeating bananas, nonsense. So that's pretty well the whole show. Uh, nothing spectacular tonight. I got to get back on the site and keep it happening. Keeping it real. <clears throat> and we come over and say hi. Philip Lawrence is talking. Hi, Pia. Thank you. Chena. Yeah, you don't wash fissionable products with water, but you got no, you dry clean them. <laughs> nice one. That's what I needed tonight, too. I got to watch my voice when I lean ahead. DJ Beasel said, what, what, what about Reactor 5, Dana? And Reactor 5, uh, the, the building, uh, the tsunami ran through that building. And they, as far as I understand it, they actually had huge problems. Uh, the reactor allegedly was down five and six at the time. And, but there's, there's actual proof. I got proof up on the site there that the reactors were going through a chain reaction and couldn't go into a cold shutdown. And so we can't find out much about that. I have scoured it. That doesn't mean I'm finished. I am going to go back at five and six and hit them hard a few more times. But it has been hard to find the information on five and six, I must admit. And there's a little bit came out recently that it had more issues. We know the basements and the first floor are totally radiated with massive back walls of radioactive uh, material, fissional products from the other reactors. We know the detonations of the reactors alongside of Unit 3, or Unit 5, you, you know, they, they, they sent projectiles directly into those buildings. And so the water and the tsunami, the, the broke, all these got broken basements, so they're flooding with radioactive water because the site is liquefaction from putting so much water on that site. And from building the walls, the water backed up into the site. And it's actually, there's a lot of spots on that site. And that's one of the reasons they got all the drums on the site and all that cement and pavement on the site is to try to contain that so they can stay on the site. They're barely able to stay on the Fukushima site. That's why they got the homeless in there. That's why you're not going to see Ken Busler or Jay Cullen or those people in there. And um, that hopefully that helps a little, Tony, but uh, Gina is still laughing at What a bunch of idiots. You don't wash fissionable products with water. You dry clean them. Uh, <laughs> that's too funny. And everybody's laughing at you. And let me see. Thank you, Ellie. I caught that one. It's nice to catch people, and i got to learn to do it more. Hi, Paulette. Audrey, thank you, too. You know, it's a humbling thing to have you people visiting me all the time and putting your faith in me. And I make sure that I do the best I can. That's all I can do. I'm very limited, but I, I don't stop. I'm relentless. That's why I've done the things I've done all my life. Uh, nuts for Art. Is saying have your son take turmeric. Really good, really good idea. Uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C is really good for cancers. It really truly is. Hi, Rich Newman. Thank you, Matthew. And the hounds says thank you to the hounds. Standing foot. Also always saying thank you to the hounds, of course. And the hounds are you, right? We all say thank you to you folks because that's just the way it works. Night, Stacy. Thank you, hugs, Stacy. We love what you're doing, honey. Appreciate the work and, and your post. And I've seen you post my videos again. And I've seen the little uh, the thumbnails you do. That's real cool. That's very tricky. That's brilliant talent. Thank you. I screen captured those for my own collection, by the way. <laughs> for down the road, for when I do a book about this in the near, very near future. I shouldn't say down the road because it'll be coming sooner than not. We'll catch a couple of more comments. Punisher is working really hard. He's an artist, and he's posting videos all the time, the original Punisher. Um, we got Mickey. Plants south of here has damage. Really, eh? Wow. And I can't catch everybody. That fish is freaking you out, Amthurst. <laughs> and, yeah, no, I'm feeling really good tonight. Thank you, Ronald. Yeah, and is there any hope? DJ Bizzle again says, is there any hope? For Fukushima, no. We got hope. We're hope. 
with uh, Fukushima's history. Uh, they're staying on the site because they're sacrificing the homeless. The same reason they stayed at Chernobyl, they sacrificed 600,000 conscripted soldiers and 400,000 uh, other tradespeople, a million people. And they went out on the roof of Chernobyl for 15 seconds, and then they went home. At Fukushima, they're sending in the homeless till they die. And then they throw them away with nothing, with just uh, anima, uh, you know, just the arrogant and animosity, and then the homeless are left to fend for themselves till they drop dead, and nobody will treat them, because TEPCO owns the hospitals. It's a really disturbing, sickening. Thank you, Kim Young. Uh, you sit. Uh, everybody, good night. Yeah, Sean can't surf. Nuts for Art, Bizzle, Ron. Good night, everybody. Here we go. I'll catch a few more as I sign off. Uh, -da. Toxic, you're welcome, folks. Thank you again. It's a humbling thing. Kate, hugs for Kate. You'll find links below to the Fukushima Hound site. As uh, one of the first links, second link below, I think now. Yeah, that's right. Um, no, it's just I got to get the site going, right? So that's the big thing with me is I'm trying to get back onto the site, get some more layers so I can start adding more to the site. But I can't add more to the site till at least another day to the nuclearproctologist.org because I got to make sure everybody's browsers are able to work on it. And so it'll only take me another day, and then you'll never have another issue. And I apologize for anybody that had a rough time with their computers. I know how frustrating that gets, and that really struck home to me when I seen your comments. I was like, my goodness. And so all day to day, I didn't do nothing. I just dedicated to try to get that out of the way, and I got a good handle on it now. It's a lot easier, and the more I'll finish that job. And so the queen, she gives her us her finger up all the time. She's destroying this planet. She's responsible for a whole lot of this stuff out there. Remember her son, Prince Harry, her nephew, her grandson, in Afghanistan, in the back seat of those helicopters, that's all he fires, depleted uranium, dirty bombs. And then he gets pictures of him helping the Afghan still children, and then he gets up in the helicopter and fires dirty bombs into their fields and their rivers and their communities. Yeah, that's a sick, twisted, very sick and very twisted. Okay, folks, good night, everybody. Thank you to the hounds. Uh, hugs for everybody. And tomorrow night we'll be back again. I'll come out with another short video at least tomorrow because I'll be doing the site anyway. And that's the whole point, right? To be able to increase production. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Hugs.